Find rest as you listen to this peaceful bedtime story. For more Bible stories that bring you refreshing sleep, download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store. Hi, and welcome back to a time of guided prayer and deep reflection on Abide as we consider getting back to business as usual. So it's the day after Christmas. Back to business as usual. The magic and loveliness of the season is behind us. So what did you learn this Christmas? What will you store in your heart? The shepherds in the field, the ones who witnessed the spectacular choir of angels, had been out. And after seeing the angels, they immediately went first to see the baby Jesus and then to spread the word about what they had seen. Then it was back to business as usual for the shepherds as well. But undoubtedly, they were changed. You might not have seen the angels in the sky on Christmas Eve, but God is still with you, still changing you, transforming you. So I invite you to join me in a time of guided prayer and deep reflection on how God can open your eyes and change you, not just business as usual. I will read from Luke chapter 2, verse 20. But first, join me in a time of opening prayer. Dear Lord God, don't let me forget yesterday. Not the gifts and the presents. Don't let me forget your presence and appearing in my life. Let it change me. And bless this time as we come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So when you're ready, I want you to softly call on the name of Jesus as your eyes close. Focus on your breathing. In fact, even let your breathing be a prayer to him. Begin to posture not only your mind, but your body before the Lord for a few moments. And take a moment too now and consider areas in your life where you might already be forgetting, be returning to business as usual without Jesus. Confess these moments and these thoughts to him right now. And as we have before, I want you to listen for a phrase or a word or an image or a thought as I read this passage, something to center and keep you anchored and focused on Jesus throughout the day. Listen carefully as I read about Jesus changing you and I today from Luke chapter 2, verse 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. With your eyes still closed, ask him to make you aware of one word or thought or phrase. Let a moment of reflection be your prayer to God right now from this passage. What did you think of the phrase, as the shepherds returned? What do you think their conversation was about as they walked back? How were they changed? And how do you want to be changed after encountering Jesus every day? Take some significant time right now to reflect in prayer over how you are different after encountering Jesus in prayer, in worship, in study.
with eyes still closed, listen again as I read from Luke chapter 2, verse 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. Did anything new or surprising get revealed to you? Spend some more time now contemplating how you do or don't feel different after being in the presence of Christ during your day. Pray that to God right now. Did you notice how the passage said that they left glorifying and praising God? Do you leave glorifying and praising God after encountering Him in prayer and worship and study? Take time now to pray for that from your heart. Ask the Spirit now for ways you can more intentionally glorify and praise God during your day. Spend time now as the Spirit reveals those opportunities to you. Listen one final time as I read and you reflect on Luke chapter 2, verse 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Now, with your eyes still softly closed, I want you to imagine this short passage from Matthew 2 about the wise men after they saw Jesus and returned home. I'll read it to you from the message. In a dream, they were warned not to report back to Herod, so they worked out another route and left the territory without being seen and returned to their own country. In the New King James Version, it says they departed for their own country another way. I want you to ponder that in prayer now. How do you think they felt taking another way home. Now, with your eyes still closed, I want you to imagine both the shepherds and the wise men returning home, taking a new way home, a fresh look at their surroundings, more aware of how their life has changed. Pause now in prayer as you ask God to give you a fresh perspective as you return to the world after Christmas, a new way.
Pause now too and consider what areas of your time with Jesus have become routine, stale, needing new life. Whisper them to Jesus in prayer right now. Ask for a new, fresh way home. And finally, thank God for the blessing of seeing His mercies fresh and new every morning. Spend time thanking Him for new blessings every day. Pray with me now. God of light, you created the universe with your word. With a word, you blew breath into a man. And I ask you now to change my life with your word. I've heard your story this Christmas season. I've seen your grace in the birth of a Savior. Open my eyes so that I truly see you, so that I get a glimpse of your glory. Let my life honor you with every breath I take and with every simple task that I do transform my soul so that you are my focus all glory and honor and praise to you in Jesus name amen now slowly and softly start to open your eyes and stretch and take a deep breath and I want you to ponder how you can find time to pause and be focused on new beginnings today I want you to try something fun today as you drive around break the routine drive home a new way visit a new grocery store and see how it feels and let it be a reminder of finding new ways to bring glory to God every day I hope you do it often today and I invite you to come back here often to connect deeply with God in guided prayer on abide Hi, and welcome back to a time of guided prayer and deep reflection on Abide as we consider how to make disciples and see others grow closer to Jesus. You remember that day, don't you? The day your eyes were opened and you saw Jesus for who He is, and you placed your faith in Him. You may have thought, okay, now what? Well, Jesus' last recorded words are significant. They give us a structure and a purpose. He tells us first, we are to go. Each of us has been put in a different corner of the world with a unique sphere of influence. Some of us are called to very different corners of the world than the ones we know. Where has God called you to be? Then, we are to make disciples by baptizing and teaching them. In other words, evangelize and train them doesn't matter if you're the greatest theologian or the most humble layman Jesus's last sentence tells us that he is with us he will do the hard work of changing hearts and lives we only have to obey so I invite you to join me in a time of guided prayer and deep reflection on how we can help others and ourselves draw closer to Christ from Matthew chapter 28 verse 19 and will you join me in a time of opening prayer dear Lord God 
Help me to lean into you and explore next steps in learning more about you. Help me to learn to go, to make, to teach, and to baptize. And bless this time as we come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now pause for a moment. Just softly close your eyes. And remember, you are in the presence of God, no matter where you are. You are a creature in the midst of creation. So I want you to find time now to just become quiet and become aware of God's presence in you. Now I want you to take a moment and consider areas in your life where you might not be helping others draw closer to God. What missed opportunities to teach are you aware of? Confess these moments and thoughts to Jesus right now. The very Creator who brought you here is concerned for you. Ask Him to make you aware of Him. I want you to listen carefully for a word or a thought or a phrase and maybe an image as I read about making disciples from Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. So go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. With your eyes still closed, ask Him to make you aware of just one word or thought or phrase. What stood out most from this passage? Something even slight. And let this moment of reflection be your prayer to God. What did you think of the phrase, go therefore? Is that the hardest part for you? Remember what God told Abraham to just go? Is the first step the hardest? Where might God be telling you to go? And maybe not where, but to who? Who might God be wanting you to teach and disciple? Ponder that humbly in prayer right now. With eyes still closed, listen again as I read from Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So did anything new or surprising stand out to you? Spend some more time right now contemplating who or where he might be sending you. Pray that to God right now. Did you notice how the passage said all nations? Scripture refers to us going to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outermost parts. That's similar to God sending you to a city, a state, 
and a country? What can you do in your own city to teach and disciple others? Take time now to pray for those opportunities. The passage also mentions baptizing them. Have you been baptized? What is the purpose of it? I want you to reflect on baptism now in prayer. How is it an expression of your relationship with Jesus? Now listen one and final time as I read and you reflect on Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And with your eyes still closed and your body postured before God, I want you to imagine more of this passage from Matthew 28. Jesus had been resurrected. Stories were swirling about what happened. He told his disciples to meet him in Galilee on a mountain, and they did. But how do you think they felt when they saw him here and there for the last time? He told them all authority in heaven was his, and they were to go teach people to observe all that he had commanded. Ponder that scene for a moment. What do you see on the faces of the disciples? Excitement? Fear? Willingness? Have the Spirit guide your imagination now in prayer from that scene. Now, with your eyes still closed, stay there for a moment with the disciples and Jesus. What do they see now in your eyes? Are you capable of teaching people to observe Jesus' commands? Do you know them? Jesus said the most important command is to love God. The second is to love others. How can you teach that to others? Ponder that in prayer right now. Pause now, too, and consider how you live Jesus' commands in your own life. What areas of your life do you need to pursue Jesus' commands more deeply? Maybe with more passion? Confess and consider that now. And finally, thank God for the blessings of good teachers and pastors in your life. Spend time thanking Him for the teaching you have had. 
for those that have discipled you take a moment now pray with me now Jesus you open my eyes you called me to be your disciple and it is your power at work in my life so give me the boldness to simply obey your commands show me where you want me to go or teach me how to make disciples right where I am give me courage to share your gospel and give me the words to express it help me to show others who you are and thank you that you are with me and that you are for me and it's in Jesus name I pray amen now slowly and softly start to open your eyes and just take a deep breath and before you run off into your day I want you to pause and consider how you can make disciples in your life I want you to try this think of a teacher or pastor that has discipled you well I want you to reach out and thank them today And if you can't think of anyone, then find time today to pray for someone to mentor you as you disciple another. I hope you do that often, and I invite you to come back here often to connect deeply with God in guided prayer on Abide. do you have a favorite children's hymn that you remember singing in vacation bible school as a child maybe there is often great wisdom in children's songs we can debate the theological issues and listen to a complex sermon but the gospel is really summed up in the simplicity of the words that we sing often at bedtime to our kids we sing jesus loves me and He's got the whole world in his hands. And as we preach the love of Jesus to our babies, let us also remember the same truth to ourselves. Do you wish you still had that innocence, still had that childlike faith, faith that Jesus really loves you? Well, join me as we meditate, reflect, and pray about the love of Jesus from 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 but before we begin please join me in a time of opening prayer dear God intellectually I know you love me biblically I know you love me from vacation Bible school I know you love me but please move that awareness from my head to my heart from my intellect to my soul make it real help me experience it because your love is the only reality that really matters and it's in the name of Jesus I offer and acknowledge this in prayer amen so do your prayers often center around maybe themes of isolation do you feel forgotten neglected or cast aside by others perhaps even by God Well, in this time of meditation, focus on aligning love, balancing yours and his. Let's begin first to posture our bodies before God as he postures and aligns our hearts with his. Take several deep, cleansing breaths. Breathe in deep and hold it for a moment, and then release it slowly. With that breathing, focus on God filling you with his love in this time now with him.
With your eyes closed, answer this question. Is there anything blocking you from accepting his love today? Sin, doubt, shame. Do you feel you've done something that puts you just outside of the reach of God's love? Well, confess that to him now and thank him for the grace and forgiveness that he freely gives you. So often we feel unworthy to receive God's love and unable to express our love to Him. Well, ask Him to make His love clear to you as you listen very carefully to 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation of our sins. What stands out to you from that passage? Which word? Listen to it again. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. What is God telling you through the thoughts He has given you in this passage? Let these thoughts of His from His word be your prayer to him in this sacred moment of meditation as you focus not on your love for him but on his love for you Take a moment now to do something that might feel a little silly. Either out loud or in your heart, sing, Jesus loves me. Sing each word as a worship to God. You know the song. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Pause the app if you need more time. But ready? Start singing away. With your eyes still closed, listen again as I read from 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation, that is, the atoning sacrifice, the satisfying offering for our sins, fulfilling God's requirement for justice against sin and placating His wrath. What did you hear this time from the Amplified Version? What did you remember about the passage that you might have heard or forgotten before? Where did the Spirit take your mind? Well, take a moment to center on that again. Drive thoughts of Jesus' love deeper into your mind as you meditate. Did you hear the word propitiation? Well, that's a $5 seminary word, but it means to cover, 
He covered our debt. He satisfied the shortfall. His love is sufficient to cover our lack. So with your eyes closed, see that. How does that feel? To receive all of the love of Jesus that you need to complete what you aren't able to offer him. Soak in that truth for several moments. Stay there for another moment. With your eyes still closed, using your sanctified imagination, imagine standing in front of a great scale, the sin in your life weighing down one side of the scale. Then watch as the love of Christ fills the other side, bringing your life into balance. Stay there for a moment in thanksgiving pause here with hope ponder the sufficient love of jesus and take all the time that you need Listen one and final time as I read and you reflect on 1 John chapter 4, verse 10. Real love isn't our love for God, but His love for us. And God sent His Son to be the sacrifice by which our sins are forgiven. This passage reminds me of Ephesians chapter 2, when Paul reminds us that God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, made us alive together with Christ. It's by grace that you have been saved. Did you hear that? Even while we were still mired in sin, unable to love him, he loved us first. So rest here for several moments. Rest here in the radiance and splendor of God's first love and mercy and grace for you. And then ponder what is your response to that. Rest a bit longer with your eyes closed and listen to 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. It says that we love because he first loved us. If you're like me, you might be thinking you are aware of God's love, but you aren't completely without the ability to show love to him too. But did you hear it? If we are able to show love at all, it's because he taught us how first. It's because he gave us the love we need to show him love. Focus deeply now on the sufficient covering love of God. If your mind drifts, let the drifting be a reminder to return to him. So pause and ponder and stay with him as long as you can as you embrace his first love for you.
Join me now in a time of closing prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, the world is filled with hate and selfishness. The world is dark. But you, you are the light that shines in the darkness. You did not simply turn away from the evil here. You chose to come into the world to bring goodness and life. In the greatest act of selflessness and love that has ever been, you sacrificed yourself so that death would no longer hold us captive. You have loved us with a depth and a grace that we can never match. So, Jesus, let me abide in you so that your love will fill my heart. Let me reflect the truth of your love to others so they may know your glory and goodness. And it's in your holy name that I pray. Amen. So almost finished, but not quite. Stay there for as long as you can before you let the world leak back into this time. Allow his love to fill you today. Every gap, every missing piece, let it all be filled with his love today. And as you feel his filling love, I hope it brings you a flood of hope and peace, peace that lasts throughout your day as you consistently meditate, reflect, pray, and abide in Christ. How big is your view of God? Some things we observe in the world are simply miraculous. And I'm not talking about break the laws of physics miraculous, but the everyday miracles. Things like a person with a soul and a will being formed inside of a mother. Take a look around at the sky, the mountains, the ocean or simply at the people you encounter today. All of that is a miracle, and nothing is an accident. The path of the wind has a purpose, as does the way a body is or is not formed. Note the miraculous today, and as you do so, turn your eyes toward heaven in awe-filled wonder. And let that be the focus of our time today, time that will be guided, But I hope you will pause the app often and allow the Holy Spirit to take you further into a place of deep, profound peace and rest and alignment with God as you meditate and abide with Christ from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. But please first, join me in a moment of opening prayer. Dear Creator God, Planet Maker, thank you for this time today to pause to just stop and listen, to open our eyes and to see the miracles around us every day. And it's by your authority and in the name of your Son, Jesus, the Christ, and my Lord to whom I pray, amen. So start to settle now into a posture before God. As we reflect on his majesty, slowly and softly start to close your eyes. And if you can, lift your hands upwards towards him. Lift them up in majestic praise. With eyes closed and hands raised, take a moment too and consider what are you doing or not doing that's blocking you today from seeing His awesomeness. Confess those thoughts and desires to God right now. As we have before, listen for a word as I read this passage, a word or a phrase, a thought, maybe even an image something you can use to keep yourself centered on Jesus throughout the day. 
listen carefully to every detail as I read from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. As you do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with a child, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. What did you notice even slightly from this passage? It's beautiful. Listen to it again carefully. As you do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with a child, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. Reflect here on how God might be using this passage to touch your life today. I am always amazed at sonogram pictures of babies before they're born, seeing God shaping and forming every piece of them, every bone. What a miracle! Can you look back over the last few days and see now a miracle of God that you maybe hadn't noticed at the time? Spend some time now thinking back and considering that in reflection. Listen again for something familiar or affirming, maybe something new, but this time listen carefully for even more as I read from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. As you do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with a child, so you do not know the work of God who makes everything. What did you hear this time? We'll focus there now even deeper in quiet meditation. What is something about his creation that amazes you? Well, pause the app here if you need. Take all the time that you need. But consider opening your eyes softly now and seeing God's creation around you. What do you see? Let what you see become a praise to God. What is an aspect of God's work you don't understand? Well, once again, be in joy-filled awe of even the mystery of His creation. Find peace that God is behind and understands all that you see. Just soak there for a few moments. Listen one and final time as I read and you meditate on Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. As you do not know the way the Spirit comes to the bones in the womb of a woman with a child, so you do not know the work of God who makes 
everything. With your eyes still closed and postured, I want you to imagine for a moment this passage from John chapter 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. But I've got a question. What does it mean to be born again? Jesus told him the differences in being born of the flesh and being born of the spirit. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Earlier in the passage, it mentions Nicodemus came to Jesus at night. Why do you think that was? Was he hiding? Was it shame? Do you ever do that? Ponder that now in reflection. The passage refers to the Spirit being like the wind. How do you sense or experience God in your life? Each of those experiences is a miracle from God. Pause here as you ponder and reflect on the miracles in your life. What have you felt or experienced, maybe perceived or reacted to in this time of meditation? We'll offer that now back to the Lord as a gift in quiet reflection, seeking his application of it into your life today. Join me now in a moment of closing prayer. Dear great God, you are the architect, the engineer, the constructor. You breathed life into me, and you gave me purpose. I can never understand all that you do, but what I do know is that you are good. You built the earth out of nothing, and you weaved the fabric of my soul. Increase my faith, dear God, so that I might trust you completely and would not try to control what is not mine to command. Everything in heaven above and here on earth is yours. I offer and pray this in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, and my Lord. Amen. Now, as we begin to close, just slowly and softly start to open your eyes. And with your hands still raised to God, take several deep breaths. How did this time of remembering miracles feel today? Before you head off, consider how you can pause today and appreciate this feeling, his awesomeness. Maybe even leave yourself a note to do that often today. I hope that focus will keep you here a bit longer, too. No rushing off, no timer or clock. Just listen to the music on Abide or the sounds or journal whatever God places on your heart. But I hope you'll allow the Holy Spirit to hold you in this place for several more minutes minutes of profound peace and rest and alignment with God as you meditate and abide in Christ.
Hi, and welcome back to a time of guided prayer and deep reflection on Abide as we consider the gift of Christmas today. So Merry Christmas. I don't know what you're doing today or with whom you're spending your Christmas. I don't know what traditions you have or wish you had. I don't know whether today is a day of fun or a day of stress. So regardless, today is here because of the Savior, the Promised One, who came to earth to walk among us, to show us a bit of His glory, and to save us from the curse of sin. So I want you and I to take some time to pray and reflect and meditate on the words of the prophet Isaiah today. Written 700 years before the birth of Jesus, this prophecy echoes the hope of so many generations that waited for the Messiah. And we will reflect and pray on Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. But join me in a time of opening prayer. Dear Lord God, thank you for this gift we celebrate today, an undeserved grace-filled gift, a gift of forgiveness, of hope, and healing through the birth of your Son. And bless this time, please, as we come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So when you're ready, just get comfortable. Pay attention to your breathing. And in the midst of this crazy, hectic day, take a moment now to just be still. Take a moment too now and consider areas in your life where you have maybe forgotten this gift of forgiveness, of hope and healing. Confess that to him now in prayer. And as we have before, Listen for a word or phrase or thought or image as I read from this passage, something that you can use to anchor and center yourself on Jesus throughout this special day. Listen carefully now as I read about the gift of Jesus from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. With your eyes still closed, consider back on that passage. What word or phrase or image stood out to you, even slightly? Let a moment of reflection be your prayer to God right now. What did you think of the phrase, for to us a child is born and to us a son is given? When the world might have felt it needed a mighty, conquering ruler, God gave us a baby. How does that feel and rest with you? Humbled? Confusing? Disappointing? Thankful? Take some significant time right now to reflect in prayer of the role of this baby in your life. With eyes still closed, listen again as I read from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, 
to us a son is given and the government shall be on his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father and prince of peace did anything new or surprising come out to you spend some more time now contemplating how the world will rest on the shoulders of this baby that he is a wonderful mighty everlasting prince how does that feel pray that to god right now Do you find yourself relating more towards Jesus the humble baby or Jesus the wonderful mighty everlasting Prince spend time now praying to both of them Ask the Spirit to open your eyes to all the many different aspects of Jesus. Wonderful, yet humble. Mighty, yet tender. Everlasting, yet a man. Spend time as the Spirit reveals them all to you. Listen one final time as I read and you reflect on Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Now, with your eyes still closed and your body postured, I want you to imagine two passages. The first is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. We learn that though he was rich, yet for our sake he became poor, so that we through his poverty might become rich. Jesus said too that the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Let the imagination of the Spirit help you see this Jesus, this humble baby. Ponder that in prayer right now. With your eyes still closed, now reflect on this scene from Revelation chapter 19. When the gates of heaven open and you see Jesus riding on a white horse, he is clothed in a robe dipped in blood. The armies of heaven are following him on white horses. And from his mouth comes a sharp sword. And on his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written. King of kings and Lord of lords. What do you feel as you see him in your imagination? Ponder that in prayer right now.
How did these two reflections feel? Which were you drawn most to? And how do both the humble baby and the mighty warrior affect your life? Reflect on both of them now, and let this reflection be a prayer to him. And finally, thank God for this gift, for the gift of the child, for the gift of the king. Praise God now for the blessings of both in your life. Pray with me now. Holy God, you made a way for us. You promised him. In Isaiah 9, 6, the prophet writes, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. In your grace, you gave us Jesus. Let today be about that gift. In everything I do, every conversation I have today, let me glorify the perfect, holy name of King Jesus, the fulfillment of every promise and the embodiment of every grace. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, slowly and softly start to open your eyes. Just take a deep breath and a stretch. How can you find time to pause and be focused today on this hectic day to remember God's gift of salvation to you through this child and through this king? So I want you to try something today. Be intentional. Schedule this. Set aside time, maybe at the end of your day today, to be alone for a moment, to be still, and to thank God not for the presents you received, but for the presence of a baby and a king in your life. And from the team at Abide Prayer, we wish you a very merry and joy-filled Christmas Day. Thank you for being a special part of our family. Blessings to you and yours. We hope this meditation brought you peace. To listen to the full collection of biblical bedtime stories, Download the Abide app in the iTunes or Google Play Store.